Well, it's great to be here on this uh, beautifully sunny spring day in Drakewich to preach the gospel and to speak about the Lord Jesus, my Saviour, and uh, just want to give you some idea of um, where I am. Uh, there's been lots of people coming past. Again, I just pray that God would have mercy upon the people here and this little sleepy little English town. And uh, God is certainly judging England in these days for our sins, for our blasphemies. Um, I'll do a 360 so you can see where I'm standing. And, uh, but uh, and as you can see, there are there are enough people around to make it well worthwhile to preach the gospel here today. And I thank the Lord for bringing me here, and I thank you for Him giving me the strength and the voice to do this work. Amen. Well, I'm back here in Droitwich for the first time in over a month and very happy to be here. It's sunny and uh, early spring and uh, quite pleased. There's a number of people around. It's sort of lunchtime. Um, Father, I ask and pray that you'd have mercy upon this town, have mercy upon the people of this town. Turn the tide here, Lord. Awaken sinners. Awaken those who are lost and in their sins. Bring them to Jesus Christ for the salvation of their souls. Father, have mercy here. Strengthen me to preach your word. Fill me with your spirit. Use me for your glory. Bless this time and uh, thank you for bringing me here today, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I ask for forgiveness and cleansing of my own sins. In Jesus' blood, amen. Well, good afternoon. It's my privilege to be here and to speak of the gospel of God, to speak of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the saviour of the world. The Lord Jesus is that one who died upon the cross of Calvary to take away sins, so that whosoever believeth on the Lord Jesus Christ would not perish, but have everlasting life. You have a soul, and without Jesus Christ you cannot be saved. We must turn from our sins. We must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. We must seek the Lord Jesus Christ. We must turn to him from our sins and cast ourselves upon him. Here in the book of Titus, for example, in the New Testament, in the Bible, we read as follows. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts we should live soberly, righteously and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Now that passage is telling us many things. It's telling us that Jesus Christ is God. Is telling us that Jesus Christ is coming back. And very soon the Lord Jesus will be revealed on the clouds of heaven in all the glory and majesty that belongs to Almighty God. It's telling us that we need to repent of our sins and believe on him. We need to turn from our sins and cast ourselves on Jesus Christ. Because apart from him... There is no salvation. We read here, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. That means all people. That means everyone, everywhere, at all times, in any age, in any generation. Jesus Christ is the Saviour of the world. And the Lord Jesus Christ will save you from your sin if you repent of your sin and you turn from your sin to God through Jesus Christ. He will have mercy on you and he will save you from your sin and he will deliver you <coughs> from the wrath to come and give you salvation and everlasting life. <coughs> Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. Okay. Now without Jesus Christ we cannot escape the fires of hell. The Lord Jesus himself warned us that hell is a real place. A place of everlasting, unending, terrible, fiery torment. 
for the ungodly and sinners. And the Bible says that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. There is none that seeketh after God. We are all together become corrupt. We are all together corrupt. We are sinners. We are sinful. We are guilty before a holy God, a God who reigns over the heavens and the earth, a God of all righteousness, a God of all power, a God before whom even the mightiest holy angels must veil their faces in modesty as they cry, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Now, the end of the age is upon us. The Bible is very clear. The world isn't going to go on forever as it is. It's very clear there will be an end of the age. It's very clear there will be a day when the heavens are rent asunder and as the lightning flashes from the east to the west, the Lord Jesus Christ will be revealed on the clouds of heaven in all of the glory and majesty that belongs to Almighty God. Are you ready? If Jesus Christ were to return on the clouds of heaven today, are you ready? But you can't be. The swearing, is, the swearing is terrible. It's a terrible sin before God. Uncleanness and sinfulness and wicked language and foul language is a sin that God sees in our hearts. Well, it's uh, very, very wonderful that you, uh, that, that, you know, may the Lord bless your child. Oh, no, I'm not with her dad. Okay, but, but uh, yes, marriage is honourable among all, the Bible says, and the bed undefiled and fornicators and adulterers God will judge. But we are all sinners, and if you repent of your sins and believe on the Lord, God will have mercy upon you, and he will save you. I don't want to repent of sins. I know you don't. It's because we're sinners, we don't want to repent. We love our sins. Jesus said we love darkness rather than light. But God says, the Bible says, now God commands all men, that's all people, everywhere to repent. So God commands you to repent. I don't listen to a man. Well, God is on the throne of heaven and God will be your judge and the Lord Jesus will either be your saviour to everlasting life from all of your sins forever or he will be your judge to everlasting torment and damnation in hell fire that's where I'm going well that's a terrible place to be a place of everlasting torment in hell fire you see now the Bible tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. God sent Jesus Christ into the world. God the Father sent God the Son into the world to die for sinners. God the Father sent the Lord Jesus Christ into the world to be the Saviour of the world. When Jesus Christ... When Jesus Christ went down into the waters of the River Jordan to be baptised by John the Baptist... We read that John cried out, Behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. The Lord Jesus is the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. <clears throat> the Lord Jesus is the Saviour of all those who put their trust in him. Furthermore, when John baptised Jesus Christ and he came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit came down upon him as a dove. In the likeness of a dove, and also a voice came from heaven, the Father's voice. This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. In whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Now, we see there, in that episode in the life of Jesus, where he was baptized, we see the Holy Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, all working together together. For the salvation of sinners, that we might find mercy, that we might find forgiveness for our sins, that we might find cleansing, that we might be made clean before God, that we might obtain salvation and a better resurrection and everlasting life. Because God will have mercy on us and he will save us by his grace. We read here in the book of Titus, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. That grace of God is revealed in Jesus Christ. 
The Lord Jesus being the Saviour of the world. The Lord Jesus Christ being the one who delivers from sin, who saves from the wrath to come. Now the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die and after death judgment. After death judgment, not annihilation, not reincarnation, that's a lie, but judgment. If we know Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. All of our sins are forgiven by Almighty God forever. If we don't know Jesus Christ, our sins cannot be forgiven. God's way of salvation isn't by works, it's not by something we can do, it's not by our own efforts, but it's by something that God has done. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish but have everlasting life. That is the love of God revealed in Jesus Christ, a man nailed to the cross of Calvary, a man raised up between the heavens and the earth, a man bleeding and dying in the place of sinners, an innocent man, a righteous man, a good man. God commends his love towards us in that whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. Jesus didn't come into the world for the worthy or the just or the righteous. He came for people like you and me. Unworthy sinners, wretched sinners, vile sinners. Every sin is wicked before Almighty God, whether it's lying or stealing or swearing or blasphemy or fornication or adultery or whatever sin it is. Now my prayer is that God will bless your child very greatly in this world. But my prayer also is that God would have mercy on you and that you would find the mercy that I found and that you'd find the salvation that I found and that you would find the saviour that I found. Thank you for listening. It's all in the Bible. And it's true. My prayer is that you'd find the same salvation that I have found, the same forgiveness that I have found. The same mercy that I have found, the same goodness, the same salvation. You see, our problem is our sins. Our sins have separated us from God. We are not righteous. We are not holy. We are not good before Almighty God. We are unworthy. We are sinners. We are not worthy of mercy or salvation. We are not worthy of heaven. We are only worthy of hell. And if we reject Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us that there only remains a certain fearful expectation of judgment. And what days we are living in today. I mean, who could have told or who could have foreseen that England would fall into such a decrepit, such a terrible condition as she is in? But the writing has been on the wall for England for a very long time. You see, the problem isn't, isn't um, political. The problem, well, there are problems in politics, very big problems. The problem isn't immigration. The problem isn't uh, a lack of health care or any other problem. The problem is that we have forsaken God. The problem is that we have forgotten God. The problem is that we have turned our backs upon God. <coughs> and God is judging us as a nation. God is judging England for her sins. For her blasphemy, for example, for the rivers of innocent blood shed in our hospitals through abortion, for example, for euthanasia and other things like that. God is judging us for the shedding of innocent blood. God is judging us for our blasphemies in our movies, in our TV shows, in our hearts. God has set the name of Jesus Christ above every name, that every knee should bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Jesus Christ is Lord. When you take the name of Jesus and use, use it in any other way, but with the utmost reverence and worship in your heart towards the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, when you take Jesus' name and you use it as they do in TV and in Hollywood and everything else, then you take the name of God in vain and God sees it. 
and God knows it. And he says in his word, Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. So we cannot, we cannot take the name of Jesus and use it as a swear word, as so many do, without incurring wrath and guilt on account of our sins and our words and our languages. Our language, their throat, the Bible says, is an open tomb. The name of Jesus Christ is above every name. It is the highest name in heaven or earth. It is the greatest name, the name of Jesus, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the Saviour of the world. The Lord Jesus Christ, the coming judge on the clouds of heaven. Do you know Jesus Christ? Have you found the Lord Jesus Christ? Because the Lord Jesus Christ is the Saviour of the world. And he saves sinners like you and me. He delivers us from the wrath to come. He gives us his salvation. You see, life is only found through the Lord Jesus Christ. You won't find it anywhere else. You won't find it in anyone else. It's in a person. It's in Jesus. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes on me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Without Jesus Christ, you are dead in your trespasses and your sins before Almighty God. Without Jesus Christ, you cannot live. Without Jesus Christ, there is a second death and there is a lake of fire. And the Bible says, whosoever's name was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. And that's our end if we do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. Turn from your sins. Turn from your evil ways. Turn from your lies. Turn from your swearing. Turn from your godlessness. Turn from your idolatry. Turn and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that you might find salvation for your souls and that you might find the mercy that comes from Almighty God. Now in Titus chapter 2 and verse 11 we read, For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared unto all men. It takes grace to save us. What is grace? Well, grace means that there's nothing we can do to save ourselves. The only way that our sins can be forgiven, the only way that we can have everlasting life, and the only way that we can go to heaven is if God forgives us, is if he has mercy upon us, is if he delivers us from our sins, is if he chooses to step in and save the unworthy and the vile and the corrupt. The grace of God. Grace is when God chooses to save the unworthy and sinners. We are the unworthy and sinners. We are the ones for whom Christ died. We are the ones for whom he came into the world to lay down his life, to become the saviour of the world and to lay down his life in the place of sinners. And oh, my dear friends, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ is that saviour and he will save you from your sin. Grace alone. Some of you will say, well, I don't believe there is a God, but if there is a God, it will be all right with me. He will save me because I deserve it. You think you deserve the salvation that comes from God? You do not. You think that you are righteous enough to stand before God? You are not. We are not only sinners, we are sinful. We are full of sin. We are full of corruption. We are full of wickedness. We have turned aside. We have gone astray. We are lost and in the wilderness because of our sins. We are far away from God. We are under the wrath of God because of our sins. Our blasphemies, our taking of his name in vain. We are far away from Almighty God and we are under his wrath on account of our sins. We need a saviour. We need someone who can deliver us from the wrath to come. Now the Bible tells me that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ, nothing else, no one else can take away my sin. The blood of Jesus Christ. 
That blood was shed when Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. He was crucified. He was nailed to a cross. He laid down his life. He gave himself as a sacrifice in the place of sinners. The Lord Jesus Christ loved sinners and gave himself for sinners. Let me make that personal. The Lord Jesus Christ loved me and he gave himself for me. The Lord Jesus Christ died for me and laid down his life for me. And I love the Lord Jesus Christ. And I thank God for the Lord Jesus Christ who died in my place. You see, we are sinners under the wrath of God, on the verge of hell. Our feet are in slippery places. And if you don't repent, you will die in your sins and you will go to hell. Simple as that. That is why I must preach this gospel. That is why I must tell you about Jesus Christ. You are on the very verge of hell. You are on the very verge of everlasting torment and hell fire. And only the Lord Jesus Christ can deliver you. Without Jesus Christ, you cannot be saved. Without the Lord, yes, stop your ears, but if you stop your ears, you will never find the salvation that comes from God. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, you are lost in your sins. But Jesus will save you, and Jesus will have mercy on you. And the Lord Jesus Christ will deliver you from the wrath to come and he will reveal his power to you and save you from your sins. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses from all sin. You see, the only way that we can escape the fires of hell is if there is a saviour, and that saviour is Jesus Christ. He is alive today. Jesus is on the throne of heaven today. He sees your foul language. He knows your blasphemies. He knows your lusts. He knows your pornography. He knows your infidelity. He knows your lies. He knows your drunkenness. He knows your pride, and so on and so forth. And the Lord Jesus Christ is that coming judge. And you must stand before the judgment throne of Jesus Christ. And you must give an account to God, because Jesus Christ is God. And it says, the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all the nations that forget God. And it says, how will you escape if you neglect so great a salvation? There is a great salvation here in Jesus Christ. There is a salvation that comes from God. There is a salvation which is perfect, which is full, which is free in Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. What could be simpler than that? What could be greater than that? That God has sent his son, that God sent and gave Jesus. And we must look to him, we must look to Jesus Christ. And if we look to Jesus Christ and look to him alone, and don't trust or look to anyone else for any reason, but Jesus Christ alone, then our sins are forgiven. We must repent of our sins and turn from our sins and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ that we might find the salvation that comes from God. You see, God knows each one of us. I know nobody here today in Droitwich. I know nobody. But God knows everybody. He knows our sins. He knows our weaknesses. He knows our trials, our troubles, our difficulties. He knows our griefs. He knows our mourning. He knows our pride. He knows our boasting. You see, God looks at the heart and he knows every one of us. The Lord Jesus Christ, my friends, knows every one of us. And he died so that whosoever will may come. And whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord would know the salvation that comes from Almighty God. This is Christianity. This is what Jesus tells us about salvation. This is what the Bible teaches. 
It doesn't teach them nice flowery religion. It teaches repentance from sin and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Repentance for sexual immorality. You know, Jesus said, Whosoever looketh at a woman to lust after her in his heart has committed adultery with her in his heart. You see, God looks at the heart. And our hearts are full of corruption and wickedness. We live in a lustful generation. A sexually immoral generation. Might I also add a foolish generation. No boy could ever become a girl. No girl could ever become a boy. Do I need to say more that this is being taught in our schools? It is madness. It is foolish. And Jesus said, Jesus said, it would be better for a person to have a millstone tied around their necks and be cast into the midst of the sea than to put a stumbling block in front of one of these children. So woe unto our teachers when they teach children that gender is a matter of choice and not a matter of biology. What madness, what foolishness. Teachers are supposed to be wise. They're supposed to be intelligent. They're supposed to be able to teach. But what madness in saying that a boy can become a girl. What foolishness in saying that a girl can become a boy. These are the mad days. This is the result of our godlessness. And our saying that science was going to answer all our problems. Let me tell you this. There's nothing scientific about transgender ideology. Nothing whatsoever. Nothing at all. No boy ever became a girl. No girl ever became a boy. It is madness. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. He that winneth souls is wise, the Bible says, sir. He that winneth souls is wise. This is the gospel of God. This is Christianity. This is what the Bible teaches us. It says that salvation is by faith alone in the Lord Jesus Christ alone. And that there is none other name under heaven given amongst men whereby we must be saved. That's why I must bring this message to you. I know that most people here would never dream of darkening the door of a church, and I don't blame you. You look at our bishops and our archbishops, you look at what they're teaching. They're teaching lies and nonsense. The Church of England has lost it. The Methodist Church has lost it. And other churches too. Not all churches, I might add. Even here in Droitwich, there are some churches that still preach this gospel of God. The Jehovah's Witnesses have lost it as well because they deny that Jesus Christ is God, although that's the plain testimony of Scripture. I was reading here in the book of Titus, and it says here that we are looking as Christians, if we are Christians, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God. That is the plain testimony of the Bible. Jesus Christ is the second person of the Holy Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And Jesus Christ very soon will return upon the clouds of heaven. And you are not ready for him. You have not believed. You have not repented of your sins. You have not turned from your lies and your swearing and your sexual immorality and your pornography and your secret wickedness which God sees. And you have not believed on him, and you have not cast yourselves on the Lord Jesus Christ. You have loved darkness rather than light, Jesus says. You have gone astray, you have turned aside. And you have not known that mercy that comes from God. The wrath of God is kindled against you on account of your sins. Oh, turn from your sins. Turn from your evil ways. Turn from your corruption and your wickedness and your lies and your idolatry. Some of you have a picture or a statue of Buddha in your homes. Idolatry. Some of you go to the Catholic Church and you worship statues of Mary or the saints. Idolatry. God says in his word, God says in his word, Thou shalt not make unto thee any likeness of anything. These are graven images. Believe me, the Pope has totally lost the plot. 
totally lost the plot. How did that happen? He lost the plot when he forsook the Bible. When he stopped teaching what Jesus teaches, he ceased to be an ambassador for Christ. And that was many centuries ago when the Pope did that. In fact, many of us believe, and I believe this, that the Pope of Rome is the Antichrist of Scripture. There is an Antichrist in Scripture. And that Antichrist today is seated on St. Peter's throne in Rome. We cannot be saved through Roman Catholicism. It is a departure from the Bible. It is a departure from the Word of God. It is a departure from the salvation which comes from God, which is by faith alone in Jesus Christ alone. Now, for example, the Bible tells us that there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. One mediator. But the Catholic Church teaches that there are two mediators, Mary and Jesus. That is false. Mary can't help us. Mary can't save us. We don't need Mary. We need Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus bids us come to him. The Lord Jesus calls upon us. He says, come unto me, the Lord Jesus says, all you that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And so we should look to Jesus Christ alone, because all the fullness of God is found in Jesus Christ. And when it comes to salvation, all the mercy of God is found in Jesus Christ. And all the forgiveness of God, and all the riches of God, and goodness of God, are brought to us in Jesus Christ. Mary herself looked to the Lord Jesus Christ for salvation. I am looking to Jesus Christ for my salvation from sin. And I am in no doubt whatsoever that he died for me. He bled for me. His body was broken for me. His blood was shed for me. Upon that cross of Calvary, when he died, when he was crucified, when he laid down his life for sinners... But as the Bible says, what will you do in the end? What will you do in the end? What will you do in the end? Will you turn from your sins? Will you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ? Will you cast yourself upon the mercy of God? Will you look to Jesus Christ alone for the forgiveness of your sins? Or will you pass on and perish in your sins? There is a wrath to come. There is a judgment to come. The grace of God has been revealed to all people, to all men. The grace of God that bringeth salvation, salvation from sin, salvation from death and from hell, salvation from everlasting torment in hellfire. Salvation from separation from Almighty God. Now there is a wrath to come and there is a judgment to come, but there is also a heaven to come and a glory to come for those who know and love Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus will have mercy on you and the Lord Jesus will save you from your sins if only you turn and if only you believe the Lord will have mercy on you and save you from your sins. Repent of your sins, turn from your sins, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Well, I want to press on now and preach in Worcester, so I shall spare my voice and uh, move on. But, Father, I pray for this. I pray for those who listened, sat, stood, listened for a while, Lord, and pray that the word would come to them with much conviction, O oh, Lord. pray you'd have mercy upon this town of Droitwich. I pray you'd turn the tide here. I pray there would be a hunger for God here. I pray that there would be an awakening here. I pray that there would be mercy here and that you pour out your Holy Spirit on unworthy sinners in this day Lord just as you poured out your Holy Spirit on me so many years ago and brought me to Jesus and saved me from my sin Lord I pray that there might be weeping and wailing and mourning over sin here and that there might be repentance and a turning back to you through faith in Jesus Christ Father I particularly pray for the young woman with the child who sat on the bench and listened and asked that she would come under conviction of sin and that she would repent Lord, have mercy upon this town, I ask and pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen.